I hope uh, am I audible? Am I audible, team? Please let me know once if I'm audible. Yes. Uh, Okay, uh, can you can anyone tell me if I'm audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Please carry on. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, good afternoon, myself, Sangam Kumar Chaturvedi. I'm a senior technical officer. Uh, I've been working associated with CDAC for more than seven years, and uh, I'm into the cyber security projects and uh, education training also. So, uh, we are also doing uh, some of the uh, uh, auditing work. For, for the government sectors also. So uh, today, uh, right now, I know it's a post a post lunch session. Uh, right now we will try to understand uh, like uh, in, after information gathering, once the information gathering is done, how uh, a, a hacker or maybe a mere hacker is nothing, not, a, uh, not, not someone like who is definitely trying to break into a system. He is a person or who is a resource person who is trying to uh, find out the loophole into your system into your is nothing but your the uh, the victim okay so uh, that is how uh, the thing will unroll uh, introduction to scanning techniques why scanning is required types of scanning then i will be introducing a bit of nmap then introduction to a wireshark a bit uh, with some snapshots post this class again uh, one more section will be taken care by taken up by uh, sanjay one of my colleagues uh, who will be giving you a, a practical approach to this particular uh, scanning okay so uh, let's start so these are the uh, I, I believe uh, in the initial class uh, in the morning uh, uh, sony ma from uh, stqc had uh, explained who is command right using uh, nmap to to find out some basic information uh, the, uh, those all information uh, gathering tools and those things uh, she had introduced Similarly, after finding the basic information, now I have to enumerate. Enumerate is nothing but I have to get into the system, find out. I want to like, I have to uh, zoom in into the ports, try to find out the ports, if there are any vulnerabilities. And if this is the stage after recognizance, and then it's uh, before it's gaining the access. So it's come between, in between. Okay, so that's the second stage of hacking. So uh, let's start. Okay, so uh, introduction to scanning techniques. So uh, what what are we trying to uh, do here? It's information is everything, right? Any information, any vital information, any any information which you think is not important to you might be important to me as an attacker, right? So uh, we are uh, in this particular session. What we are learning till now, we are uh, trying to visualize if. A particular hacker, or if a particular uh, a person who's uh, not a person or a group of people who, uh, if you want to safeguard your site, a website, or your resources, it can be your computers and network and everything, everything included. Okay, if we have to uh, safeguard guard that, I should have the information. So as an uh, here we enact as in the thief itself or the hacker itself, and we try to find out the information. What are the loopholes into the system? So in the initial uh, stage where we do the footprinting, footprinting, what we do, we find out uh, uh, very basic information. There are two types of uh, information gathering. Okay, that is uh, one. Uh, sorry, two types of scanning. One is your active scanning, and second is your passive scanning. Active scanning is in a routine way. In a routine way, you start understanding uh, there is one system administrator, and uh, there are some people who just sit around. And they will run some uh, set of scripts and they will try to find out if there is some breach or anything happened uh, into my system. That is an activity into the server or, or your resource. You try to find out, okay, with your tools, available tools. But in the passive mode, what we do, we uh, 
here we try to uh, find out the different the different types of tools and techniques and algorithm every everything we try to use and try to find out if uh, the uh, we it, it is like more elaborating into uh, into the system and finding out very vital information if there is anything available or not okay so this kind of uh, information we try to understand the more i get the information about the potential uh, victim like victim is nothing but my client here if that client if i want to get more information then i can give him the better protection right uh, it's like it's like uh, prevention is better than cure so that part we try to do it in here so uh, why scanning is required after the information gaining, gain, gathering sorry and reconnaissance that is also the same part of the information gathering or you can say it as footprinting to enumerate more details okay to enumerate more details about uh, how should I see this one? Uh, after uh, to enumerate, enumerate is nothing but to gain more information. More information after I know that uh, this is the particular IP which I want to attack, and this is the particular uh, land uh, land location, the geographical location, the system MAC MAC address, and other things. Everything uh, after finding out okay, now this is a war. I want to I want to focus. Okay. To increase the focus of that particular place, now what happened? We have to enumerate. Enumerate was a, I want to find out more information, like the port, which ports are open, and what communication is happening. Some kind of services run over and all the uh, services which are running up. Right, I have to find give the uh, basic information. Uh, all find all the possible information regarding the network, the operating system, okay, the ports, everything, whatever is possible with my tools. I have to find out. Okay. So uh, whether we check for a uh, detailed information here, where we check for a uh, detailed information about the uh, victim. So uh, again, the, in the scanning session, what we do is uh, scanning stage is a, a pre-attack mode. It's before attacking and and after information gathering. Okay, scanning uh, mode where it refers to package of techniques and procedures used to identify the hosts, ports, various services. First, services can be your, uh, if you are hosted on a particular website. Again, you have to, you, you might go for the particular uh, uh, architecture, such as your LAMP, LAMP, L-A-M-P. LAMP is nothing but your uh, Linux operating system. A stands for your Apache, M stands for your MySQL database, and P again stands for your PHP and other, uh, other uh, Python, uh, any language which you, scripting language which you want to use. So, okay. So, uh, th th this kind of information I want to find out. After finding out the inform various information, then I will go for the vulnerability scanning. But first I try to find out what are the ways, uh, what are the ways that is, uh, a particular service is being rendered by the, uh, the victim, okay. And what later part after finding out these are the potential ways to get into the system or uh, the network, or, I would like to say it as a uh, victim. Okay, uh, after finding out the uh, the ways to get into the victim system or uh, architecture, total architecture, then what I will do is ask, uh, I will do the uh, like what's it uh, the vulnerability scanning. Then I, with my tools and my technique, I will try to find out. Okay, uh, these are the basic information I have found from the victim system. And with my algorithms and my tools and techniques, I will try to find out if I can find out any, any vulnerability, basic vulnerability, which is always available in the market. Okay, so this is how we do it. So uh, normally we go for a uh, Linux operating system, that is your uh, Kali Linux. Pirate is also, Pirate OS is also used nowadays. But Kali is one of the most famously used for this kind of uh, security uh, scanning and other things, attacks. So uh, instead of being biased to one particular tool, I would like to introduce you that uh, there are some very basic tools uh, and techniques which are available in the market, which can be used to, uh, to I would like to, uh, to explore, to find out what are the uh, loopholes into the system, okay. So initially, you have the most first and foremost is your NMAP. Okay, the network mapper we say. 
uh, again in the nmap you have two versions one is your uh, command line interface and then you have again uh, zen map that is your uh, g it provides a better gui graphical user interface where with some uh, including the ip of the victim and with selecting the some of the op drop down options i'll be able to uh, scan the whole victim system for like fingerprinting finding out what is the operating system is running uh, what are the ports open right all those kind of information i can find out there then one more most famous one of the famous uh, tools is like your nessus but this is a commercially active it it works on a policy frame okay you you frame you frame a policy and then you set the uh, what kind of uh, scanning you want to do with the system and then uh, you, you get the uh, with uh, with its own available uh, algorithms and other things to find out it finds out the uh, the vulnerabilities which you have okay then you have shodan if this preferably uh, it's similar like your nmap and vmap okay nessus uh, and uh, what it does is mostly uh, if you are going having a lot of iot devices where the iot devices are communicating over the um, over the internet it will find out and tell you that okay this particular uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, the infrastructure it can be a webcam and uh, maybe your printer it is on maybe it's on a public ip and you have not given up a, uh, a protection to that maybe it's not sitting uh, uh, maybe you have not set up policies to access the uh, printers and webcam then what happened there is a high possibility that the attacker might uh, use your uh, he can view through your uh, webcam or maybe a printer and other access uh, other uh, hardware which you are having so normally for that uh, people go for shodan but again this is open source initially but uh, if uh, you want to get more information right then you have to pay, pay to them okay <clears throat> so uh, again we have something called as uh, uh, yeah so these are the uh, ports uh, once i again uh, i have just mentioned that three types of scanning one is a port scanning then again you have uh, the other second one is a network scanning and third is your vulnerability scanning. Then port scanning, what we do? Uh, ports are of two types. Okay, just remember there are two types. One is your hardware ports. Second is your software ports. Hardware ports are nothing but your uh, 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 the USB drives, the USB ports which you have in your system, and uh, other other ports through which you can uh, associate or you can uh, make your device to communicate with your computer. Okay, so uh, that is your hardware ports, right? Which we, you can interact, and then again you have the uh, software ports. Software ports are nothing but uh, if I want to uh, uh, set up a server, okay, server is nothing but maybe that a client server kind of model. If I want to set up that, then there are around sixty-five thousand ports which is being allocated into your computer. So for basic example, like your if it is for seven port number seven, it is for your uh, thing. Uh, uh, echo, sorry, it's for echo. 25 for mail, 80 yeah, for email, 80 is for your HTTP, 443 is for your HTTPS, where the HTTP or secure where you use SSL certificates, right? Where the data is transmitted uh, on the website uh, through your web pages in an encrypted manner. Okay, so these kind of uh, uh, we will try to find out what are the uh, ports open or what are the uh, ports being used here. After that, we again try to find out the network scanning. Inside the network scanning, we, we would like to get gather more information. Like uh, if we want to find out like which port is running, uh, what are the uh, uh, which ports are open and running, uh, whether it uh, uh, what happens is that uh, nowadays even the people uh, who are monitoring, you know, the people who are the administrator, they are very much also they know that with the basic information and ideas, they will try to protect your. Uh, scan uh, your network. So if they find out there's some malicious scanning happening from the outside, they have the, the firewall itself will stop them, and they will they might again uh, there's, there's an intelligence into it that where it can <coughs> it can uh, block the particular IP address itself. Okay, if it's for a continuous time, it is fine. It finds out that uh, this somebody is trying to uh, find out about information about my server, and we can just block it. Right? So I think there are ways and means even how we can uh, pass through the firewall 
and get more information about the servers and everything that we will be discussing later in the slides. Okay, then after uh, the network scanning and getting all the basic information, we will try to uh, discover and presence of uh, uh, very basic vulnerability. If there are some vulnerabilities, these are very basic. Uh, okay, maybe the port is not secure, uh, the communication is happening over an HTTP, not on the HTTPS, or for example, right? And if, if the port, uh, maybe uh, uh, the access given to a user into the system in the promiscuous mode is uh, uh, the other, if the file sharing is being allowed, all those things can be uh, found out uh, with my vulnerability scanning. One scenario I'll be explaining uh, at the end of the particular session where you will be getting very basic information about it. After scanning, what happens? Then we go for the gaining access. Gaining access is nothing but your, that's a set third, that is your third model, <coughs> that's third stage where you start attacking the system with your uh, known, with your own intelligence and with your own tools. Let me mind you that not all, uh, whatever the tools you use, in the previous session in the by STKC, they had explained like uh, <coughs> the tools might not be giving you exact information about uh, the services running or the ports open. You have to cro cross, you have to make sure that definitely is that the only service running or not. And what you can do is you will go for multiple other ways and means to find out the ports and the services which are running. Okay. So uh, these are the few ports. Uh, which are being hosted, like 2021 is for FTP, file transfer pro protocol if you are using. If you are using a particular service where you want to transfer the files into uh, into our system or uh, into the uh, into your network or outside the network, you go for the particular 2021. And if it is a secure shell, it is 2022, sorry, it is 22. Telnet service if you are using, it is it runs on the port number 23. SMTP if you are using a mail server, then what happened? It runs on your port number 25. These are the very common ports. Okay. If it's an IP set, it runs on 5051. Some of the most famous, like yeah, DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocol, which takes care of allocate allocating IP to the system which are uh, internally associated into the network. If CDAC uh, for CDAC, for example, it will have it has its own DHCP server. It will give you uh, once a client like me. I uh, I plug in with my uh, <coughs> with my RJ45 and try to access the network. The DHCP server will assign a IP to it. Okay, and then uh, it again cross check after a particular time whether that particular system is being, uh, using or not the same IP. If not, then it will be deallocated from the system. Okay. Then if I am going for like uh, some of the other like yeah network time protocol. If you want for every computer, you want to provide a timestamp. Time you want to provide the time, then you can go for a network time protocol service. You can have it. Then if you are going for a simple network management protocol, you go for SNMP. That again runs on 61, 161 and 162. And one of the most famous like your the most of the banking applications they run on 443. That is HTTP with secure socket layer where the data is being sent in an encrypted manner. Even if I try to sneak into the data, I won't be able to get, uh, get the information. Uh, I will be getting the information, but it will be in an encrypted manner. Okay, similar 3306, if I'm running a MySQL, and if it is say 8006, if I'm going for a uh, Proxmox kind of server, other things. Okay, so there are more than around 65,000 ports and around 1,000 ports are reserved for uh, a particular purpose of hosting a service. Okay, so network, uh, network scanning. Uh, after, uh, yeah, once the uh, system scanning is done, then we go for the network scanning. And the network scanning is uh, one of the components of an intelligence gathering or information retrieving mechanism an attacker used to create an overview scenario of the target organization. Here I try to find out what are the, uh, if I can find out any, uh, uh, the network scanning, uh, I will try to find out if, if it's available in the, if the internal network IP, if I can find out uh, how to do that. If, if, if particular information, a particular IP is being exposed into the market or maybe for the uh, public who are out of the network 
if I can scan them, by those information I can uh, start finding out in my network scanning. So these are the few important protocols used in, for the network scanning. First one is your, your ICMP, that is the Internet Control Message Protocol, where uh, it usually used to report errors when the request is done. Uh, normally the TCP or UDP uh, connection, uh, TCP or UDP protocol, on that it works perfectly. And uh, ICMP must not uh, be under, uh, it, uh, uh, it will find out the trace route. Uh, if you go for a trace route command under the Windows, uh, then you can find out the hops and the system where uh, the packets are being moving around. And second one, your, your uh, internet protocol C, that is your TCP IP protocol. Then uh, you have the UDP, uh, TCP is nothing but a wired connection. UDP again is a wireless, where uh, TCP ensures that the data when it is transmitted over the network, it is delivered at the destination. Whereas on the UDP, uh, UDP uh, protocol, universal data protocol, datagram protocol, uh, it will it does not care about the results. If the packet fails to reach the destination, it won't notify the sender that the data is being uh, sent, uh, or I mean, it does not give the acknowledgement. It does not wait for the acknowledgement from the, uh, the, the the victim or the, the server. I'm trying to uh, find out. Okay. So now let's narrow down into something called as NMAP, that is a network mapper. Because it is an open source free uh, license, this comes inbuilt with your Kali Linux. Also, you can install it in your Windows or anything, and you have to install your uh, the ATXC file from the site. Okay. Many system network administrators find it very useful, such as for network inventory, managing service upgrade. Schedule and monitoring the host or the service uptime every time. I can just use my NMAP. Okay, NMAP uses uh, the IP uh, packets in a novel way to determine what hosts are available on the network. Uh, I, if I am go, going for an, uh, the OS fingerprinting, I want to find out what is the OS running. So, one of the tools is your NMAP. It's not necessary that only through the NMAP you can get the data. No, it's not like that. <coughs> there are other scanning tools also through which you have to again cross value uh, check and find out that yes, uh, this is the operating system running on uh, the, uh, the system, the IP, which I'm trying to, uh, the auditor I want to attack, okay. So what kind of packet filters, firewall information, and all the other things you can find it through your NMAP, okay. So why people use NMAP, uh, the attackers are normally the, uh, the people into the security domain, they go for NMAP, very basically. Why? Because, it is, first of all, it is open source, anyone can download and use it. Then, uh, second is that it's very flexible. It supports dozens of advanced techniques, okay. Uh, uh, and always, there is an, up, up, in every time, there is an update in the market, I mean, uh, into the market, of, regarding any particular vulnerability or, uh, or particular tool functionality, those are all updated in NMAP, okay. It is very powerful, it is portable, it can be uh, hosted, it can be used in any of the operating system, okay. It can be uh, used in your, your Linux, definitely that's what Kali Linux does that. Even into your, uh, into your Windows also you can use. It is easy, why? Because just you give command NMAP hyphen a particular, uh, the, uh, like what is the, the command and then the target host you will get more information regarding the the target system, target host. Okay, so few of the commands you will be just seeing uh, through the slides. Okay, it is well documented. Yes, definitely it's well documented because uh, every uh, every time an update is being done, the documents also get updated and that is notified to the uh, that the user can again find out uh, through the site website. Yeah, again, uh, NMAP does not come with any particular warranty uh, that if anything, uh, you cannot say that uh, I had found out this particular vulnerability, um, uh, this particular service through NMAP, and, uh, but uh, it's not like that. Uh, so it does not, no one provides a warranty regarding this, you know, it's just a tool. It works on particular rules, set of rules and algorithm, and with that, it tries to find out the information. So uh, again, NMAP, as I have told you, uh, there is something called as for GUI, that is a Zen map. Then you have your, uh, there are other uh, debugging things like NCAT, NDIP, NP, 
uh, those all things we use. Preferably, people use this command line interface that is your end map. Okay. So this is how it looks end map, end map, the scan type, the option, the target specification we just mentioned here. For example, end map is a command. Uh, you want to do an aggressive scanning. With aggressive scanning, I'll find out very much information about uh, about the system, the target uh, target host. It it will give me every uh, information. But the thing is that uh, it will take good amount of time to give the information to me. Okay, so it, it takes time. Uh, T four, uh, T one, T two, T three, T four, T five. It is the speed at which the packets are being sent to the the host. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the victim, I would say, the scan, uh, a victim system, and would give the information from that. For example, end map. This is the IP, and uh, yeah, I can I can uh, uh, I can uh, fix up the uh, range. Like I want to uh, take up this particular range of IP, and for that I want to find out, make the do the end map and find out the information. That again I can do with my uh, one hyphen five and get more information. One hyphen five is one ten dot ten dot zero dot one ten dot ten dot zero dot two ten dot two till five. It will scan and give you the result. Okay, it will perform the scanning for every IP and give you uh, information if it finds. So there are few uh, very important uh, scanning techniques. First is your TCP scanning. It is a simplest port scanner, uh, which uh, which uses the operating system network function, and is generally next option to go when sync uh, is not feasible option. Normally, the TCP works on your handshakes. Okay, that handshakes will be just seen in the later uh, slides. Sync scanning is nothing but your. Uh, uh, it's again a form of TCP scanner. It uses uh, the network functionalities of the system. The victim, I would say, the port scanner generates raw IP packets itself and monitors the, its response. It, it throws some packets and how the server reacts to the particular packet, and if it gives some particular output or uh, if it responds to the particular packet, in what ways it is responding, those things can be caught and uh, given to me as an information. Okay. Again, then we have an UDP if uh, your server. Is running on a say like an uh, if some of the services are running on a wireless uh, kind of thing, uh, like if I am going to try to uh, break through into a router or switch or anything, then you might go for UDP and other things. Act scanning is something but you wait, you send the package and you wait for the acknowledgement from the the uh, like the, uh, the victim. Okay, this kind of scan does not uh, exactly determine whether the port is open or closed, but whether the port is filtered or unfiltered, that is what it does. If it is filtered, it means that uh, it's been dropped. Unfiltered, it means that yes, it's been, uh, it will not be uh, classified in terms of other things. Okay. Now, this kind of scan can be good when attempting to probe uh, for existence of a firewall and its rule set. Then you go for this particular act scanning. So, this particular uh, screenshot, what you can see, nmap hyphen A. I'm doing an aggressive scanning with this particular time uh, T4 scan me dot n n map dot r. This is again provided by your n map uh, for uh, understanding your uh, n map commands and other things. You can use this thing. This again uh, open into the market. You all can do it. But uh, so you just go through the guidelines and then uh, do the scanning of the system. Okay. So right now you can just find out that. Uh, uh, port number 22 with TCP is open, which again uses the SSH service. And what kind of the version it is using? It is using Debian 7, uh, and then and open SSH 5. Point, uh, service pack 1, protocol 2.0. What happens is that this every information is very vital to me. Okay, uh, on similarly on 2048, then uh, this is some particular uh, RSA uh, algorithm being used. And port number 80 is also open that runs uh, your HTTP. And then you have your ADP, ADAP, ADAP is also running on 642 here, ADP. And similarly, a no ping echo, other things are also running. So, the, and uh, it is showing me that uh, it's a Linux 2.6.39 version being used here. 
okay now what happens is that uh, with this particular version uh, okay i know that uh, this particular uh, port 22 is open for example which is running ssx i will get into the net and uh, with the cve common vul vulnerability i'll find out that if uh, any particular exploits are available for this particular version if it if it exists what happened uh, in my report uh, uh, if i'm doing a producing a report I mentioned that these ports are open. This particular port is open, and <coughs> and you are using an outdated version of your open SSL. Okay, kindly pad up with that and update it, and uh, please secure the uh, the service in a better way. Okay, uh, then the system admin will be informed that we will work on that. If not, then the attacker can easily use the particular version. And uh, with using all the other vulnerabilities, it can get into the system. Okay, this is how things happen. Right now, I'm just doing scanning. I'm not attacking here. Okay, attacking is the next stage. So while uh, port scanning, and also we will be just seeing some of the attacks and other things in the later class, tomorrow's class. I think I'll be talking about these things in, in, in depth with the attacks. So while NMAP has grown in functionality over the years, it became on efficient port scanner. People started using uh, it in a better way. And NMAP is much more uh, granular. It divides port into six states. What are the six states? Open, closed, filtered, unfiltered, open filter, closed filter. Okay. And uh, uh, different port states. Open. What is open mean? It's an application is actively accepting the TCP connection. And also your UDP datagram, uh, that's the universal datagram protocol. <clears throat> Finding this is very often a primary goal of port scanning. What are the ports open? Like for example, I was able to find out here the port number 1822 is open. Closed, uh, a, a closed port is accessible. Maybe you're not running any service, but the port is open. Uh, port is closed and uh, what happens is that it receives a response to NMAP uh, packet but there is no application listening to it they can also be helpful in uh, showing that the host ip is up and uh, i know that okay this, uh, this ip is up and uh, we may, i can also find out the mac address and other things also even if it's closed okay filtered nmap cannot determine whether the port is open because the packet filtering prevents the maybe the firewall the firewall installed by the system uh, the victim uh, prevents you from uh, uh, scanning for the port. Huh? Then the filter uh, filtering could be uh, from a dedicated fire, well firewall or the router rules, the host based firewall for the software. This of course uh, definitely frustrates an attacker because uh, they also provide uh, very, uh, not very less information. Okay, so uh, definitely the filters drop uh, uh, the packet which is in. Uh, Trying to use to scan the system. Okay, so some of the TCP scan. Right now here, here you can see NMAP. I'm doing a TCP scan. Okay, port number P hyphen P stands for your port. Which port? 443. And this is the target IP. Okay, so this is how it works. What it will do? It will give me an output stating that port port number 445, the TCP connection, is open and it runs something. Microsoft hyphen DL and its MAC address is, uh, is this. Okay. So what happened uh, here? Uh, I can uh, uh, I, I'll start pinging. I'm uh, trying to get more information about the target, but I will also use a listener that is by your Wireshark. Wireshark to capture the output being sent to the uh, the victim. So you, we can notice that uh, the source has sent a sync sync packet. Then he gets a sync acknowledge, then acknowledge and the sequence number is one, and then he gets and source again same thing the reset and acknowledge. Okay, uh, that that's how you get the information from there. And this is the uh, the handshake I was just talking about. Source had sent him and sync the sync packet. If the port is closed, the receiver will be receiver will be sent and respond to reset and. Uh, 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 and then acknowledge uh, packet back to the, to the TCP, saying that okay, uh, my port is up and running. Okay, so NMAP uh, TCP hyphen P 
PCP scanning I'm just doing is port number 2389 and this is IP and, and this is the structure how it looks PCP scan for closed port again how it looks sync I try to send the sync, sync packet to the port number 445 and it will just say research and acknowledge and, and give, revert back to me then uh, source uh, similarly uh, still scan normally what happened uh, if the uh, the system the admin is very wise enough to uh, to uh, cover to to hide his own uh, all the ports he he will see to that not no not the uh, the ports are being shown to them now what happened still you can try to find out you can using the ss that is s small s and then a capital s this is a stealth scanning In the stealth scanning what happened the sync Sync uh, package is used by the, is the default and most popular scan option for a good reason. Here you can uh, hide the traces of the uh, whether you, uh, how you, you will be hiding. You are not waiting for any acknowledgement from the user, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the host system. You are not waiting for any uh, acknowledgement from him. What you do is the scanning, uh, you do the scanning of thousands of ports per second on a fast network, not hampering the restrictive firewall. Firewall will not be having any information that a particular uh, uh, IP is trying to scan me or not. It will, it will also relatively typically stealth PC. It never completes the TCP connection. That handshake does not happen. It does some half handshake. It will send the packet and it will listen to what he's trying to do. Uh, and uh, it will not wait for any acknowledgement from him. Okay. Then, if it is open, uh, then if it passes through the through, uh, through our firewall, then it, it says that it said uh, uh, yes, the port is open. That's how you can do it. Okay. So null scan is again a series of zeros you send uh, in, into a TCP packet, and since there are no flags set, the destination will not know how to reply to the result, uh, the request sent from the attacker. It will discard the packet and no reply will be sent back to the attacker okay so this is how it works uh, nmap uh, hyphen s and n is for null, null scan n s a uh, quote number 22 i found that quote number 22 runs out open ssh now what happened it will just uh, tell me about all the information it will just say uh, you can see uh, through your wire shark the destination is a 192 1.102 tcp protocol is in use and length of the packet is 54 and uh, uh, and and, uh, and the port number is 22 and uh, no packets are being sent so you can just see no packet but we just bombards with zero and a sequence one and uh, this is the and guys know that because it is all zero okay so the again the udp scan udp will send for an uh, a scan Packet to the port number 161, and, and also it will send for uh, it will also send data to it. It will not wait for any uh, because the UDP is, uh, does not revert back with data, right? It is a wireless kind of uh, wireless protocol where you don't uh, where the, uh, the system does not wait for any revert backing message from the from the uh, attack uh, from the, uh, the the victim system. Okay. Okay. So next part is your uh, uh, nothing but your vulnerability scanning. Vulnerability scanning is nothing but uh, after finding out the very basic information about your ports and then your networks, what kind of networks you will use, and also the what are the ports open and what is the operating system, and uh, about all those information, then with your known, uh, you have some little uh, bit algorithms in your end map. Okay, or uh, into your colleague right? With that, you try to find out the vulnerabilities of your system, of the the the, uh, the system which is being attacked. So where we will, we will try to understand about the, some of the common vulnerabilities and the exposure, which is again uh, provided. This is an open platform by provided by the mitri.org, cve.mitri.org, where the all the uh, Vulnerabilities which are being found are being uh, with the bug bounty hunter kind of thing 
are being dumped into the uh, the CVE. Okay, with this information, you can scan the system of the victim and find out if there is any uh, uh, any any of the services are being any of the services are outdated and if there is any particular uh, a vulnerable uh, exposure uh, being available in the market. Okay, any attack payload is available in the market or not? You can just find out that. The payloads again you set up by the attacker, and then he can attack the uh, the system, the victim. Okay. So the pen tester or the ethical hacker is done all the vulnerability found in the organization network. All those information can be put up, will be founded or found, and it will be jotted down and and be uh, given in the uh, the test report, the, uh, which is being given to the client. Okay. So right now I've just taken one particular, uh, we have, we have 10 minutes, so let me just hurry up. So we have, uh, for example, uh, we take up an SMB service, uh, this is again installed at your uh, Microsoft server message log, and we try to find out a particular vulnerability to it, how to do that. Before this, we have all checked out that uh, if we want to find out which operating system and all those information that so uh, this one we, we had done uh, in the previous uh, for scanning all the uh, the services where all uh, nmap hyphen t4 is a uh, time speed at least the packets are being bombarded to the to the, uh, to the victim and also i tried to find out what is the version of uh, being running, uh, being used, and also I want to find out the fingerprinting about finding out what are the, what is the operating system. Then also I do, I can go for a no ping. I will not be uh, waiting for, it. I will not ping him. I will just, uh, it's a half shake, half open, half open handshake, where I will just send the packet and I will not wait for it, for any uh, request from that. If, uh, if the uh, firewall accepts it, uh, you can start doing the uh, find, uh, find uh, you can start doing that okay the particular port token and uh, maybe some particular services if this no ping no ping is not being uh, handled properly by your uh, by the firewall then it will let through uh, into the, uh, the the system the victim system what it does it does the network scan i'm just doing the port scanning and also i can do the service scan and os scan with my nmap and after doing those things, uh, what I do is, okay, I found that these particular ports are open. Now, I want to find out as, as in like a first-hand information about what are the vulnerable, uh, is there any particular vulnerable, very common vulnerability into the system or not? How can I do that? I just go for nmap hyphen T3. T3 is slower than your T4. Uh, I, I'll just send for a packet and wait for some particular milliseconds. And then what I do is, I once I do get that, I'll have run some, some uh, there are thousands of scripts which are being pro, uh, provided by Nmap, uh, which are into the market. And with that, it will find out the vulnerability option and uh, to the particular uh, victim's IP. And uh, with no ping scan, it, uh, it revert back to the uh, if there is any vulnerability in the system, the victim system. For example, here I just get something like SMB hyphen bulb hyphen MS. That's some exploit for this in the uh, in, uh, provided by the CVE, and that is again uh, your <coughs> uh, that's something like this, and your uh, Nmap can find out that. Okay, so uh, that this is the output that you have. After finding out that okay, some particular uh, uh, vulnerability is there in the system. Now what I do? I go for something called as your yeah, this is the information I was just talking about. Uh, after running this particular command, you, after running this command, you will get something like this. SMB hyphen world MS 70 uh, This is what, remote remote connection executor vulnerability Microsoft in the SMB V1 server, which is being used. And the CVE number, common uh, vulnerability ex and exposure. This is the number, if I use it, I can attack into the system and I can get the whole access of the system, the, the victim system. Okay. So, uh, 
and the date also is mentioned here that from 2017 is used. If the victims have not updated and upgraded the system or not set the policies for their SMB, maybe this attack can lead the attacker to get into the system of the victim and, um, ex uh, and they get uh, uh, extract information about um, the so get, get the information about the, the victim. Okay. So uh, yeah, after finding out that, uh, I'll go to my, uh, I'll open a meta spot again. This is some uh, framework provided by your uh, Kali Linux. What it does is, uh, it will, uh, from that, for example, if I can run this, I'll show you how you can uh, access this. I'm not installing it. So let it. it uh, whatever the steps I'm saying, mentioning, it takes a good amount of time. Okay, so you have to have a lot of patience. Uh, you have to have good knowledge. And you have to have you have to read uh, read all about the exploits. And, uh, well, from that you can get information. If this particular uh, host is up, and if this particular port. What are what are the possibilities and attacks I can get into? I can do to get into the system. All those things have to be uh, found. Okay. So uh, once that is done, uh, let me wait for it. Okay, this is my Kali Linux. I can get to the uh, application. Okay. So the vulnerability scan, uh, you use the Nmap. And then for, uh, yeah, this is the Nmap. Where you can just give Nmap hyphen. Uh, in the previous session also, two sessions back, I would say. You have been taught how it is been using the uh, and map is used to extract the and you give the IP address okay of the system. You get, uh, you get the uh, information regarding this. Okay, once you find out like uh, the vulnerabilities and all those things, uh, then what you will do is. We can use our uh, the metasploit. This is the uh, the metasploit framework. We take time. Where uh, all the uh, the basic uh, uh, the the vulnerabilities, all these things you can find uh, with respect to the, the, the package can, uh, with respect to the system can be found here. And then with that, you can uh, do the attack to the system. Okay. Like you, what will you search for MS hyphen MS 17 hyphen 010 and, uh, and you can uh, execute, you search for this. If there are any exploits, then you can use the exploit use slash exploit windows smb ms 17 hyphen 010 this is the vulnerability which was uh, a vulnerability package uh, uh, with which i can attack the system and then what i will set the the remote host what is a remote host and then i will go for an exploit just hitting the enter uh, if the attack is successful you will be able to uh, intrude into the system of the victim Okay, so uh, in depth we will be just doing a, 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 a practical tomorrow. 
in this regard. So, uh, yeah, this is the MSF. I was just saying, I can just search MS. Search for uh, um, SMB hyphen well, uh, it will, will give you some. Uh, okay, just a minute. Uh, yes, okay, so uh, this is what happened right now. I think uh, time is up. So, uh, uh, this is what I was just trying to give information regarding. Uh, the scanning. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Thank you. Sir, so one question is here. Uh, in a single OSB system, how to use PVE technique? Sorry? In a single OSB uh, system, how to use PVE technique? Okay, I'm not able to see you. Uh, if it is an operating system, you are saying that how to find the CVE, right? In a single OS based system, how can we use CVE? Yes, you can definitely. Initially, uh, what you will do is you will uh, first try to find out which operating system it is using the uh, nmap hyphen uh, O and the target IP, and it will give you the operating system. With the operating system, you say that uh, you can run the vulnerability. Uh, you can run like uh, n map. You can just give for an uh, n map. Uh, the n map hyphen t three and the hyphen hyphen script well the IP address and uh, it will if there are any particular vulnerabilities available, it will uh, give you the information. And also uh, if the party, uh, if there are vulnerability, it will show. Else, what happened if uh, the services which are running, for example, an open SSH is running, or maybe <clears throat> an FTP service is running. For that SP, FTP service, if the, uh, the version number and other things, you can just go to the internet and into the internet, you can just search for a vulnerability there. You can find out there. Also, there is something called as uh, there are, uh, you, uh, you can just go to the website and then you can. Search for uh, any uh, 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 search for the particular uh, attack which you can do to that. All those things are available there that you can download and incorporate into your system, and then you can attack it. Attack and uh, uh, use the CVE here to attack, get into the system. But CVE getting a CVE uh, is uh, normally the CVE or normally like uh, very way back. Uh, it's not like the very much updated one. The people who keep on updating the servers and other things, probability of getting the CVE, uh, the common vulner uh, vulnerability, and uh, 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 the ex exposures is very less compared to uh, if a particular person is using a very old old operating system, like maybe he's using a Windows XP, for example, or maybe Windows 7, and he's used, then he has installed the FTP server on that. Because he has not uh, uh, strengthened his security and other things, there's high possibility that with the CVE, there might be a CVE existing into the market. With that, I can attack the system. Okay. Uh, and we will also be checking about these things uh, in detail uh, with some techniques tomorrow in the morning session. There is nothing like a uh, secure uh, port or something like that. Normally, all your website it will be running on 80 port uh, if an HTTP. And if it is an HTTPS, you go for the 443. Uh, if you want to secure the, uh, if you think that uh, you, uh, what kind of security you're talking? Security is not just uh, securing the the website web, web alone, website alone. You have to secure the 
the operating system on which you have hosted then also the updated version of your uh, yes uh, updated version of your uh, uh, the apache for example if you are using and, and uh, you see to it that uh, uh, you set some rules out there that uh, no one can get into your system uh, and, and and access your site okay uh, if your system is in sharing mode or not you have to check all those things and you cannot say that uh, only there is nothing called as 100 percent security you can use but there are ways and means and measures there with which you can secure your <coughs> system like uh, 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 you can uh, close all the other ports uh, and if uh, you have an intelligent system uh, you can find out that uh, there are a lot of uh, one particular ip the attacker ip is trying to every time uh, sending packets and uh, you can do that there's nothing like uh, 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 you, you uh, the but the, at the end it goes through your port forwarding can be done here it's not it's not like you cannot just do it definitely you can do it but the security is like on the whole by, from the infrastructure hardware okay then your uh, like if the hardware is not updated maybe and, and your uh, operating uh, system is very much old enough and the buffer size uh, if it cannot take up the buffer size uh, if there are multiple kind of say like a DOS attack is happening DDoS attack is happening to your website then uh, if you're not uh, the, if there is a lot of uh, packets or a lot of information trying to be active to your, into your website though it's not attacking if the buffer overload happened maybe your website crashes again this for that you have to have uh, you have to see to that the switches and your router, uh, you have to have some rules out there. If there are multiple requests coming from a particular IP, it has to be blocked, or uh, the package has to be dropped, or maybe the switch can restart, something like that. It has to be taken care of. Okay, so that is how it is. I think uh, the next participant uh, definitely uh, you will get a more insight into it. Uh, uh, the practical session will be hosted by uh, Sanjay. So, uh, for more, from, uh, more practical approach. For this and they will take over thank you i hope i have answered your question any other questions you can just give it in the chat thank you sir this is uh, we are now we are going to a uh, short break for five minutes uh, we will come back at 3 55 p.m <laughs> 